Right then, everybody's just been taking Mickey out of me, so is what it is. So following on from last video, Paul's still busy building it up, so we'll cut to that whenever it makes sense. Dan's just filling in all in boat. So from uh, past experience, most of the time these this bit of boat you can cover it over with a little thin bit of plastic if you want to, but usually we end up throwing all tools and everything at the back of these when you're carting them around so it's always a good idea to put something in above rather than below. I think that's your thinking in it Dan. Yep. That's his thinking. So we'll uh, get all that tidied up. All fuel tank and all that stuff so sort of sorted and we'll, we'll have a look at that car later on. There's still loads of tidying up and loads of chopping and messing about to do inside. So I'll have a quick look over at what Paul's doing. So the engine's pretty much built now. All ancillaries are on the water pump, injectors and injector pipes are going, I believe, looking at this. Obviously we've still got all turbo set up to go on. That's not going to be here until probably tomorrow. So we might end up putting this in in the engine bay without the turbo and stuff, but not ideal. But it is. I don't know yet. So if you're watching the video and keeping an eye out, you're wondering what this jerry rig setup is. So not to go too far into details about it, but basically the first time that you get any heat into this engine, it's always a good idea to do it when there's no cylinder pressures. So warm the engine up, get the block and the head and the head gasket to all move about and do what it's doing rather than stretching head bolts, losing your gasket seal, squash it together, get it warm, what it squashes best it can, get a nice bite in there, in the temperature but with no pressure. Retort your extras. What sort of extra torque do you normally get? Um, usually torque is like 125, it can drop down to like lower. Yeah. So but if you've already if you've already had your pressures in there, they might not drop down a lot. Yeah, yeah. But you've you've lost that integrity. Yeah. So that's why we do it. It's not an it's not an hard thing to do, it's not expensive. It's a 20 quid kettle and a old water pump that we take off when we're getting rid of EGR coolers. So that's always done us better. We've I don't think we've, since we started doing this, I don't think we've bleached an egg gasket. Not really, no, not we're lifting egg. Yeah, we've never lifted egg and really bleached egg gasket. So, it works. So, Paul's going to carry on putting everything together. When it's all in a full assembly and getting bolted into the car, we'll come down and have another look. But there's been loads of filming going on while Paul's been building, so this might be the end of this video. Maybe it's not. So, I'll see you later.
Right then. So, onto the Mark V. The engine gearbox is all ready for going in the car. And then that means it's ready for Dan to take it over and do some fabrication work on it. So they're just preparing everything just to drop the lump in as it is and go from there. So we'll just have a quick look at some stuff that we've got going on, some interesting stuff, and uh, yeah, see what's going on with it. So the latest thing to go on, if you watch the time lapse, is this water pump. This is the Peerberg electric water pump. This is the final design on our bracket, trying to get as much of the engine vibrations out of the pump as possible. So we've put it onto this bracket and that should, uh, well, it's a bobbin on top of a bobbin on a bobbin. So it's uh, wobbling about like mad. So this is not the pipe we're gonna run. This is just one that we had on one of our cars that we're just gonna uh, walk up on. But that basically goes onto there like that to keep it away from radiator. And then this one here goes to the radiator. This is what we are talking about before that replaces the thermostat. And this bend, it's a little bit too small for that, but it fits perfectly in there. We're gonna to have to go from in there, like that, onto there. So we might be able to get it with a bit of slash cut straight. We might have to put this bend in. So these bends are not cheap, but we'll see what we can do anyway. But we're gonna come from there to there, as tight as we can, close to engine as possible. And then we're gonna to have to see if we're gonna get away with I think we'll be able to get away with not modifying the radiator um, and just go straight on to factory clamp there, but we'll see what happens with that, not too important. Oil cooler fittings, they're blanked off at the minute. We'll do that when we put all the uh, front end on. Gear linkage brackets on. That's got the solid bushes in there that we make, so that's going nowhere. And then we're going to have the motorsport cables from the shifter going in there. Manifolds came back from Camcoat. That's all ready to go. Coated inside and out. V-band housing, BMW sort of housing, but the Audi compressor side, it's a bit smaller. Um, on this, we're gonna straight to the mechanical actuator we're hoping that we can get away from. Uh, what's happened to your camera, Danny? <laughs> your camera's all gone wrong. Um, so yeah, we're hoping to get rid of electronic control. This is using our braided oil feed. It's not clipped up at the minute. We're gonna clip that up somewhere at some point. Standard oil return. The, uh, this is the same one as what the like normal Mark IV Golf bottom mount stuff runs. So the idea with this turbo setup, normally the top mounted and your turbo's about here. We've gone bottom mounted to get the weight as low down as possible so that you've got good centre of gravity. So a lot of race cars would go even further and try and put turbos even further down, but we're keeping it simple. This is sort of off the shelf stuff that we can sell. So this belt, we've got rid of the tensioner to make things simple. We just put a stretchy belt on here. So don't need any extra, there's no other bits to fail. Um, then engine specification, obviously we ran through it before, the links to everything we've fitted to this engine will be in the description. So to click on there and have a look, the pictures, prices, part numbers, everything is there. So if you wanted to build an engine like this, there's a recipe there. Um, if you want us to build you an engine like this, or one a bit further, or one a bit milder, we can do it all, it's not a problem. Um, we're just sorting out for a guy in the States who's doing some wiring. Uh, he wants, I think, 10 or 20 wiring harnesses to run these engines in random vehicles. So we're going to sort that out so we can do all that sort of stuff as well. It's not cheap. It's, it's a couple of grams worth of work just in the wiring and the ECUs. And these engines, by the time you've done all this, there's a, there's a fair amount of money in here. I, I, I wouldn't like to guess exactly how much, but it's, it's a, few, a good few thousand pounds. It's five plus at least, just for a basic spec engine once you start getting into it everything it gets gets very expensive um, <clears throat> so it's ready to go in I don't want to go over too much on the specification exactly because it's all in the link but it's got 
everything, but it's only going to be running 220, 230 horsepower. So in theory, it should be um, should be fairly reliable. We're hoping to get a good two or three seasons out of an engine without even needing a refresh. But we'll see what happens. So Dan and Paul's got a few little bits to finish on the car before they get on to the, dropping the engine in. So we'll leave them to it and we'll go from there. <laughs> so the subframe's just about on. Just got to swap a few bolts over because we'd still got the used bolts in a few areas. Um, so we're getting them on there new steering rack bush to go on that Dan forgot about. Um, so that's going to be on there, then the engine can get slid in. One of the other jobs that's took a long time, but you've got to do it properly, is these here, these little holes. So they go all the way up into the car. Oops, I know. Um, that's for the air jacks. So once we've got uh, all that rigged up, we've still got the rear one to do. Once we've got all that rigged up, we'll uh, We'll put some videos on how that works. Hopefully it doesn't nearly fall over like Leon does. But we'll figure that out later. So once this is in, we've got the, the main ones getting the front end, the radiator and that little water pipe on. And then Dan's just got to fly through with the exhaust. The boost pipe should just fit. So in theory, there's not tons more from us. But when he gets onto that, that probably tomorrow we'll uh, have a look at what he's doing and uh, try and see how it's all done.